In the heart of the Indian Ocean lies the island of Mauritius. Located in Port Louis, the capital city, stands the Aprawasighat World Heritage Site. This former immigration depot bears witness to the great experiment undertaken by the British in 1834 to demonstrate the superiority of free labor over forced labor. The British chose Mauritius to experiment the new system whereby an individual agreed to work as an indentured laborer as per specific conditions stipulated in a contract. The first 36 indentured laborers reached Mauritius in 1834 from India. More than 462,000 men and women hailing from India, China, the Comoros, Madagascar, Mozambique, Southeast Asia and Yemen would follow. The successful use of indentured labor in Mauritius encouraged other colonies to resort to the same system of labor. It led to the migration of more than 2.2 million laborers throughout the plantation world between the late 1820s and mid-1920s. Indentured laborers were required to spend at least two days at the Aprawasighat immigration depot before being deployed onto the different sugar estates of Mauritius. During these two days, the indentured laborers completed administrative procedures linked to immigration. They were fed, photographed, and their immigrant ticket made. They were also examined medically to see if they were fit to work. Immigrants suffering or suspected of being contaminated by diseases such as malaria, cholera, or typhoid were sent to the different quarantine stations around Mauritius such as Flat Island or Ilo Gabriel. Quarantaine, c'est un système d'isolation qui empêche les gens qui suspectent d'une maladie contagieuse ou qui ont une maladie contagieuse de contact avec les gens qui sont en bonne santé. Given the large influx of ships arriving in Mauritius, the colonial authorities decided to strengthen sanitary measures in the 1850s in order to protect the population against diseases such as cholera widely spread in the 19th century. Les plates tiennent l'endroit idéal pour faire la quarantaine pour deux raisons. Premièrement, les tient assez près avec Maurice pour que les autorités cave communique avec l'île et gère l'île. Et deuxièmement, les tient assez loin avec Maurice pour protéger les habitants de la maladie qui ne introduire par les bateau. The numerous vestiges, chimneys and factories over the island bear testimony to the living and working conditions of the indentured laborers in the mid-19th century. The indenture system exerted control over the indentured laborers. Ordinance number 16 of 1835 stipulated that an indentured laborer who refused to work or being repeatedly misbehaving or who left employment before the end of his contract had to pay a fine or be imprisoned in the depots across the island. The authorities built the vagrant depot at Grand River Northwest in 1864. More than 60,000 Indian and non-Indian indentured and ex-indentured workers were imprisoned at the vagrant depot. Mauritius had over 300 sugar estates where 85% of the working population were employed. The indentured workers often had to face various problems such as irregular payment of wages, poor housing and rations, a lack of proper medical care, and penalties for missing work or leaving a state without permission. Indentured laborers took steps to improve their living 
and working conditions. Between 1860 and 1885, they lodged more than 100,000 complaints against their employers. Almost 80,000 of their complaints concerned the late or partial payment of wages. As from 1907, Manilal Doctor, a lawyer sent by Mahatma Gandhi in Mauritius, carried several actions in favor of the recognition of the rights of indentured laborers. Local British authorities established the post of protector of immigrants in 1842 to remediate to these issues. The protector supervised the indentured system and reported on the welfare of the island's workers. Indentured laborers lived in the camps located close to the sugarcane fields. The camps contained houses made of perishable materials, such as earth mixed with cattle dung and thatch roofs, and sometimes in barracks made of stone. In Trianon, a bizarre stone building erected in the 1860s is preserved. This structure, with an architecture similar to the military barracks, was the place where the indentured laborers or siedos lived. Trianon is a typical estate including the house of the planter and its dependencies, the sugar factory and adjacent buildings, the stores, indentured laborers' camps and sugarcane fields. Sugar estates, such as Brado, have kept evidence of the living of slaves and indentured laborers on a plantation. Further documentation of this key site for Mauritian history can yield comparative perspective with similar sites in the Caribbean. Research on Antoinette Sugar Estate, where the first indentured laborers went to work in 1834, is ongoing. Rehabilitation of these buildings could save them from disappearance. The indenture system generated an important number of documents related to the life and the work of the indentured laborers. The Mahatma Gandhi Institute, the National Library, and the Mauritius National Archives house these archives. C'est des archives du MGI, Indian Immigration Archives. Ils remontent euh, l'histoire de l'immigration indienne. Les archives lui-même expliquent l'histoire de, des engagés Saint-Maurice qui date de 1834 au 1910. Nous avons un service, le service euh, au public qui retrace, qui remonte leur, leur, leur filière ancestrale. Donc comment procéder avec C'est à partir du bureau d'état civil, il remonte les actes de naissance. Et une fois qu'il y a l'acte de naissance, le premier qui est né de l'immigrant, là il y a le nom et le numéro. Et nous, nous aurons le service, on donne tous les renseignements concernant l'immigrant en question. These documents are of outstanding value. This is the reason why the immigration archives were inscribed on the memory of the World Register of UNESCO in 2015. Several projects are being conducted throughout Mauritius to document the numerous elements of intangible cultural heritage. Projects to collect the memories of life on sugar estates are helping to document the fast disappearing traditional life associated with the sugar industry. The men and women who traversed the world as indentured laborers bequeathed their memories, traditions and values to millions of their descendants. The legacy of indenture contributed to the creation of the rich, multicultural societies that are the hallmark of our modern world.